No one has died from love, but some have died from lack of it. There are some marriages that end well, and then there are those that never end and have a happy ending. In this case, it's neither, as both the lack of love and love for another turned a marriage into a cold-blooded crime. There are those who see marriage and love as something sacred in the eyes of God, a promise that you must fulfill at all costs. But sometimes there are extreme cases where revenge, greed, or even infidelity unleash a drama of unimaginable proportions. This is where I wonder, how can something so noble and pure turn into something macabre, into something so wrong? The main actors in this story are Frank Tier and Michael Forcier. From their student years, they seem to be a perfect couple that would be chosen as the winner in the end of year school contest. They had so many things in common that people wondered if fate had truly brought them together. They shared many of their daily activities such as a love for sports and even had a family history of involvement in war and the military. The couple's friends said they maintained a balanced relationship almost perfectly. Michelle was a very kind person who used to talk to everyone. He was a very outgoing person. On the other hand, Marty is described as a completely opposite person. He was a reserved and quiet person, more of an introverted type. It is always said that it cannot be completed. They treated puzzles with the same pieces, and it seemed like they were the perfect example of this analogy. After a few years of relationship and finishing high school together, they decided to stay together even in a long-distance relationship, as Marty's goal was to enlist in the American Army Armed Forces. For his part, Michelle also decided to join the Air Force Reserve Army. The beautiful part of this was that before Marty left to pursue his dream, he made the decision to propose marriage. It goes without saying that Michelle's response was obviously a resounding yes. Up to this point in the story, everything seemed to be going wonderfully. The future foretold a loving family with happy children. But what happened was that for almost eight years, the couple was changing their residence. Since Marty was sent to different military bases, the life of a soldier is never easy. I would think marriages aren't easy either, but I wouldn't know because I'm not married. But from what I hear, they say it's not easy. Thank God I'm not married. The few moments when her husband was home were not enough. He spent more time at the military base than at his own home. And when he could be at home, his wife was studying to become a psychologist. So the marital problems were immediately apparent. On the other hand, to the neighbors, they still seemed like the perfect couple. The reality was completely different. During this time, Michelle only wanted to go out and have fun and had no plans to have children. Her husband had no time to go out. On his part, he did want to have a comfortable family. What happened here is that Michelle was already tired of the kids. Well, she was tasked with taking care of her siblings when they were little. With a boring life, that's how she describes it. She had spent years babysitting her siblings. And when she wasn't, she used to study the Bible at the local church. What she was looking for was simply to have fun and live life at this moment in her life. Once she managed to enroll as a psychologist and now had more free time for herself. The only thing that happened was that her feeling of loneliness increased. So shortly after, she fell into a deep depression, which made the fights with Marty become a bit more violent. And even though things could no longer be sustained in the marriage, somehow or another they managed to keep it afloat. Marty, for his part, was concerned about his wife's mental health. He convinced her that she urgently needed to occupy her time with another activity. So he urged her to go back to school. She did not take this proposal well, so obviously she didn't listen to him. The key point in this story came when Michelle discovered the world of online dating or sex chat. These were something like Tinder Bumble, Plenty of Fish Facebook Match and all these kinds of things. Not that I've used them, but I've been told. My friend William is the one who tells me about these kinds of chats. But anyway, by that time she felt abandoned by her husband. She confesses that proposals were raining down on her, from casual encounters to threesomes with couples. But shortly after, Michelle's emotional void would be filled by another military man named John Diamond. The young woman's new love affair was also a college graduate who enlisted in the United States Navy. The same year the couple got married. The curious thing here is that he also had a history of a family dedicated to the American military. His grandfather was a prisoner of the Second War, and his father participated in the Vietnam War. So for several months, night after night, they began to talk through a chat. They said that both were married and felt lonely. 
It's the classic bar, you know. John, for his part, was sincere. He told her that their marriage was failing due to his repeated infidelities. However, this did not stop Michelle from her love at all. Her love goals, as she considered herself a woman who always gave in to carnal temptations. In this relationship, John saw the excitement that Marty could no longer provide. At the time when Michelle was now almost full-time involved with John, her husband suspected nothing. He even felt relieved that the constant fights had ceased. He now saw a way out for the relationship that had suffered for so long from arguments to have a happy ending. So after losing almost all interest in his marriage, Marty, and after several months of conversation with John, they decided to meet in person and take the second step. Apparently, Michelle had some kind of fixation or fantasy with the military, or with authoritative figures. Well, for the second time, she fell in love at first sight at their first meeting. Obviously, there's no way to justify infidelity, but what happened is that this little adventure gave them a new way of seeing things. It added a pinch of spice to their lives from the overwhelming and boring routine they both felt, not to mention a bit of fun. So they didn't take long to spend more time together, secretly and without anyone suspecting. They went to all kinds of places from nightclubs, bars, and even swingers clubs. With this, Michelle had finally found the adventures and fun lifestyle she had desired for years. Until one time, Marty came home unexpectedly and felt that his wife was acting very strange. So, he ended up convincing her that she needed to go to therapy in a last attempt to save their marriage. Michelle strangely accepted the proposal, and in the various meetings with the therapist, each one brought out the concerns and thoughts about the relationship. On Marty's part, the complaints were directed at him wanting to have children, and preferring a more homely woman who didn't go out as much and was willing to start a family. On the other hand, Michelle, however, complained that her husband was obsessive-compulsive about the idea of having a family and that she now felt free, so she had no plans to change her lifestyle and stay at home. After all, her husband was never with her at home either. So, the therapist immediately noticed that the couple had very different points of view, and that the most likely, and at the same time the healthiest thing, was that this marriage had no arrangement, as their life projects were totally opposite. And besides, he emphasized that Michelle seemed to make no effort to try to save the marriage. By the summer of 2000, it was quite evident to everyone that the couple was no longer a healthy couple. Michelle then decided to leave Marty and obviously moved in with John. They took a vacation to clear their minds from marital problems and went to the Netherlands Antilles, while in their heads they fantasized about living on a Caribbean island. During this time, Michelle applied to work at a medical university. Her dream, however, was short-lived, as just a few weeks later the weight of reality came crashing down on her. She realized that her relationship with John was no better than the one she had. So she began to feel bored and overwhelmed again. And after much hesitation, she decided to return to the United States and reunite with Marty with whom she was still legally married, as neither of them had signed a divorce decree at the time. The problem here was that, even though she resumed her relationship with her husband, she did not cut off contact with John. She was involved with both men. In short, she didn't even know what she really wanted in her life. But the good thing, if you can say that, is that she was decent enough not to bring children into the world. By July of that same year, even though they were in the process of divorce, they went back to therapy. Throughout this time, the couple, despite being reconciled, lived in separate houses. But after a few therapy sessions, they moved back in together. And with this, obviously the lies kept on and on. And everything seemed to be a vicious circle, an endless circle. He would fight with John. He would fight with Marty, and he would reconcile with both at the same time. So on December 9th, Michelle celebrated her birthday with John, after lying to her husband that she was going to celebrate with high school friends. On the other hand, the chilling thing is that while everyone believed that things would remain the same with the couple, in reality, she had devised a heartless plan, a macabre plan, to try to give a new meaning and fun to her life. So eight days after Michelle's birthday, the couple, Martin and Mitchell attended a Christmas dinner of a doctor who was a mutual friend. That night, everyone toasted for a good upcoming new year, and with the hope that all their dreams would come true. However, the only wish that would come true that night was John and Michelle's. As the evening was winding down and they were leaving around 9.30 at night, Michelle told Marty that she had to go to the bathroom, that she wouldn't be long. She, on the other hand, took the opportunity to make a call to her lover that this was the signal to carry out the plan they both had woven together. 
So once the couple was on their way home, she told him that she had to pick up some books at the library to write some reports she was working on. Michelle told him it wouldn't take long and to wait for her in the car, while Marty drove to the library, parked, and waited for Michelle to return. So, after several minutes of growing impatient, he decided to get out of the car and walk in search of his wife. That night a cold wind blew as the winter leaves rustled with each step he took. Upon reaching the back staircase of the building, he felt like someone was following him. The bushes were swaying in the wind, but there was something odd about this scene. Just as he made the decision to turn around to see what was making the noise, he received two gunshots in each shoulder. As he fell to the ground from the impact and fear, two more loud bangs filled the dry air of that night. In addition, he received two shots in each leg, and without time to see his attacker, another yellow thunder lit up the scene, opening his head and the fifth bullet lodging between the... Michelle says that the moment she heard the shots, she ran out of the office screaming, and that upon seeing her husband, she immediately went to ask for help at a store a kilometer away. There, some employees helped her call the police, and once she was questioned about these events, her story simply made no sense at all. She was questioned about why she didn't use the office phone to call 911, to which she replied that when she rushed out upon hearing her husband screaming, she forgot the keys inside and couldn't get back in. The expertise of the seasoned authorities quickly determined that everything seemed a bit strange, somewhat planned. Because, to start with, the crime scene was not a robbery, as the victim was not missing any of his belongings. And the second piece of evidence was that the paramedics told the police that Michelle's pulse was quite bad, and that it was very normal for a situation of such magnitude. And the other two conclusive pieces of evidence were that, on one hand, the neighbors gave a description of a man who used to accompany Michelle on some occasions, and with this, they quickly knew that he was the lover. But the icing on the cake would be that just a few months ago, Marty had taken out a life insurance policy for over $500,000 and, oh surprise, the beneficiary. Well, yes, it was his wife. The evidence with this was everywhere, so it didn't take long for them to speculate a possible motive for the events. When questioning the wife of the military man John Diamond, she confessed that that night he received a call around 9 in the evening, and that when he finished it, he told her that he had to go to the military barracks on the order of a sergeant. Upon leaving his home, he changed clothes and left with a winter coat. But the definitive proof of this crime came when they found out that John had borrowed a 9mem Smith & Wesson gun from one of his friends. This a day before the crime, and the bullets matched the casings recovered at the scene. So a year later, in March 2001, John Diamond would be arrested for first-degree murder. The Army's disapproval of the authorities resulted in a legal process being carried out against Michelle as the evidence was overwhelming. But by that time the woman had already fled, and it didn't take long for her to devise another plan for this situation. And this is the distinction. In this case, she underwent various surgeries to evade the weight of the law. Consider the Lord of the Skies for you to understand. She even forged several of her documents, changing birth dates and names. When it seemed that her plan had borne fruit and her capture was not going to be possible, the authorities asked for help from a specialized group. In capturing fugitives from the law, and just within a matter of days, they found out that Michelle had a new boyfriend, so they set up a guard at the suspect's house. And indeed, they saw a woman leaving the residence with characteristics similar to those of the fugitive. So, with this, she was arrested and convicted in 2002 for the premeditated crime, the premeditated murder of her husband. However, the most curious thing is that they offered her a deal that for some reason she did not want to accept. If she confessed in detail, they would only give her eight years in prison, which here it is likely that her ego did not let her accept the deal. She believed that the jury would see her as another victim, and her verdict then in her head believed that it was going to be innocent. However, Michelle, now 51 years old, continues to serve her life sentence without the possibility of parole. This is how this dark, manipulative, cold and heartless woman was able to kill for love, a love she had for another man. If you like this case, remember to subscribe to this channel and to my new secondary channel called Mystery Pepe, where I tell stories, but now in English and on my Instagram, where I've revived it. And now I post stories about previews of these videos and about my personal life. And as my friend William says, see you in the next mystery.
Thanks for watching the video.